Go ahead, Andrea. Okay. All right. So yeah, so um, I love hearing the kind of like snippets about some of the projects already, but welcome to the intro session. Um, just as a reminder, so this new Jersey Student Climate Challenge, the objective is really that we're, you know, our overall goals for students uh, through this project is to first and foremost, um, really go ahead and create and complete, you know, maybe it's still in progress, that's okay, we were just talking about that, but um, really have a specific project or some sort of tangible outcome that uh, is related to either the a cause of climate change or um, a negative impact of climate change that we're trying to reduce. Um, through the project and through the video, we really want to make sure students are emphasizing that connection to climate change. You know, every once in a while, I think in our maybe our first year, we got like a littering project and okay, that's fine. But unless you can like make the link between why littering is a problem as it relates to climate change and a negative impact of climate change, it's a little bit of a, a weaker project as opposed to um, a project that has a more direct connection or a, a at least a connection established by the students about how their, the issue they're tackling relates to climate change. And then finally, for the video, we're really hoping that students tell that story, what they did, when they did it, how they did it, why they did it. Really, we're curious always about um, the inspiration, the challenges they experienced. You know, Al, you're just talking about how some of the groups had to pivot and kind of that up, those ups and downs. And that tells that that makes an exciting story, right? That makes an exciting video. So those those you know kind of ups and downs are great to include, and you know they help give us a, a further understanding about all the things that are related to climate action and in these types of action projects. Um, all right. And as we know, if we're on this call tonight, we probably understand kind of like the, the super simple explanation of climate change, right? There's human activities and some of the human activities are related to causes of climate change. Um, most notably, the increased concentrate, concentration of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere, which then through the you know amazing scientific phenomena um, creates climate change. And then we have all of these negative impacts that we experience and our local environments experience. And so we want students really to be honing in on um, action that focuses either on reducing some of the causes of climate change, reducing some of the human activity that leads into the development of climate change as an issue. And so that would be a mitigation project or helping students to create, uh, you know, kind of establish a project that will help to decrease some of the negative impacts of climate change, like flooding or droughts or things like that. Um, and so that would be an adaptation project. And so that's where, you know, just a, a project where students are just, let's say, researching about the phenomena of climate change and then creating a video that's just um, informational in nature is not really what we're looking for. We're really looking for students to take action and do something that is going to help either mitigate climate change or adapt to climate change. There are tons and tons and tons of possible projects related to, you know, kind of both sides of the puzzle. So on the, the front side, the mitigation side, having students brainstorm projects that could help decrease, um, for example, fossil fuel use for transportation or deforestation. You know, if that is a human activity that, that the students are concerned about, you know, thinking about projects that uh, encourage increased uh, recycled paper usage or um, encourage, we were just talking about some of the uh, native plant or tree plantings and why that's important and how that feeds back into reducing some of the human activity that relates to causes of climate change or um, thinking about fossil fuel use for transportation, if we have anti-idling campaigns or um, buy local, eat local campaigns. I know I think Krista uh, was one of your um, kind of projects thinking about local food production, um, you know, thinking about how that has a direct impact on using less fossil fuel for transportation for our food and, or, you know, when, when cars or trucks are idling. And that has a direct link to decreasing some of the human activity that causes climate change. So there's tons of different projects here. Here are just some ideas. Similarly, on the back end, if we're thinking about an adaptation project, um, if you have, let's say, a school garden that is frequently impacted by heat waves or drought, what can we do to help protect that, that garden from droughts or from heat waves? Well, we can do things that up uh, action project that relates to increasing water conservation efforts or installing rain barrels. If we're thinking about um, coastal communities, how can we help them think about 
um, you know, developing and restoring and, and replanting dunes or living shorelines or things like that, and how that can help decrease some of the negative impacts of, let's say, sea level rise. So lots of different ideas for projects, and we're looking for students to make that connection. So like that littering project that I kind of said was like kind of like an eh project. If students can make the connection between when we reduce litter, we won't clog uh, storm drains or other kind of uh, 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 water outlets. And, and when we have these flash floods, we won't have uh, increased impacts of flooding, then, okay, I can see the climate connection. But if we're just doing a littering project because it'll help our school grounds look prettier, eh, not so much, right? We, we really wanna see that climate connection established by the students and related to the action project that they're doing. Um, and then as a part of the submit, any questions before I move on to digital stories? Kind of where I think I think everybody, at least on the call, and Judy, I see on the in the chat as or Jody, I'm sorry, uh, in the chat as well. I think everybody's feeling pretty good about that there's a distinct link, right, to climate change um, to the ongoing projects, the action projects that your your students are working on. Um, so so what are we asking students to submit? Uh, first and foremost is a digital story. And so what we mean by digital story is a video that is not just informational in nature. We really want students to kind of allow the viewers to kind of go on the adventure of this action project. So um, what were some of the complications that they experienced or what was some of the inspiration that they um, took from their environment or from their personal lives or lived experiences that led them to want to uh, take on these different types of action projects. Uh, last night we had um, an educator on who her students were horrified when a whole bunch of old textbooks were being thrown away when they were still good textbooks. They just were no longer the current edition. And so, you know, thinking about recycling book efforts and how they could be recycled as opposed and reused as opposed to just thrown into a landfill or, um, you know, talking about how, well, we wanted to do this project and then we were said no, and then we had to do this project and this pivot or that pivot. So the, helping the viewers to really kind of uh, connect um, with the students and their their hard work, the inspiration for their ideas, helping um, these stories to communicate uh, why this is something interesting and why this is something important to the students and really helping us to understand how hopefully this was a collaborative effort. You know, so I taught middle school for a long time. I know middle school and high school, we've got some characters. We've got some some dramatic students that really want to tell a story and have fun with it. And we encourage that. So creativity is awesome here. Um, you know, telling the dramatic story of the ups and downs or, or you know, making it a little bit of a scenario where, where students are kind of playing a part to help communicate on the collaboration um, between different parties or, you know, having a faux... Uh, a Zoom call or a, a debate or, or, you know, lots of different opportunities for students to kind of be creative in how they're telling the story of that, their action project and the inspiration, um, the, the what, the why, the when, the how, et cetera. Um, when we send out the link to, with these slides, um, these links will be active. So there are a couple of great resources from past years. We have a digital storytelling guide. Um, that kind of gives you a little bit more information. We also, um, I think it was maybe last year or the year before, we had a, an awesome webinar on actually crafting your digital story. We had a local um, environmental filmmaker give us some of his tips and tricks for how we can really tell a story that is engaging. It's still very informative um, for our audience members. And then of course, viewing some of the videos from last year is always a great way to see um, the kinds of projects that are getting submitted and how, you know, we're always trying to improve. So, you know, that's the bar has been set and now we're looking to, to push past that. Uh, we have some awesome projects that have been winners in the past and we can't wait to see what's coming in this year. Um, yeah, so like I said, lots more suggestions, technical tips, I'll go into in just a minute. Um, Digital storytelling or, or telling a climate story is really become kind of popular in the field of climate change education. So there are a lot of other organizations out there that are doing kind of similar things. And so as such, we have a lot of great educational resources out there that are um, great teacher guides and kind of tips and tricks and technical suggestions out there. So here are a few. Um, organizations that we that I highly recommend that I think are, are strong examples. Um, 
And as students are creating the video, you know, there's a number of techniques, right? We can think about storyboarding. We can think about uh, creating a shot list of, uh, you know, planning your your video. Uh, what are the what are the shots we need to do so that students can accurately convey kind of these these kind of five or six ideas. Um, so first and foremost, students should be reflecting on and sharing in the video why the climate crisis is an important issue to them. Uh, you know, thinking about how it's affecting their lives, how it's affecting their community. Similarly, okay, so it's a problem. What are they doing about it? And what steps are needed? How are they kind of following through? Um, what was successful? What did they accomplish? And then, of course, what were some of those challenges? Because the challenges are interesting. We can learn from each other's challenges and to be able to overcome them more easily the next time. So I think sharing out challenges is one of the most interesting components. Uh, then also, how do the, the actual actions uh, undertaken by the students what do they actually have to do with climate change, right? How are the steps you're taking that, or that they're taking actually going to do something and have a positive impact? Um, yeah, and so that's kind of like the these six things we really, really love to see in the videos. And that's where, that's what's going to really, um, when we look at the rubric in a few minutes, really uh, kind of give that nice cohesive, comprehensive score um, in the video because we're looking for inspiration, we're looking for the climate connection, we're, we're looking for kind of the full story about what happened and to be told in an engaging and, you know, kind of creative way. A few more like technical tips um, and so the video should be submitted to us as an mp4, uh, MOV or an AVI file. Don't use copyrighted music because we can't then share it. Um, there's tons of free music available. Students can absolutely be using their cell phones or other digital media recording devices. Uh, you know, keep it casual. Uh, you, as I said before, we can have like a, a like a fake Zoom meeting and record that. You can also narrate a PowerPoint presentation. We want to make sure that we're not, um, you know, not turning it into a, an informational lecture about climate change, but really around the action project. Um, I know sometimes, you know, it's the the default of like, oh, well, I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation, so I can put as many words as possible on the slide and then just read the slide. Eh, we're trying to get away from that, right? We can we can be more engaging in, in our digital media. The students can do so much more than even I know how to do. So, you know, I, I defer to some of their creative ideas sometimes. Um, there's lots of, if, you, if students don't want to be featured like themselves, their faces, there's other ways to do speed drawings or uh, animation, stop motion. There's lots of creative ways to think about this that don't um, require your students to be on film if they, for some reason, don't want to be. So that's totally fine. There's lots of different options. And then editing software. This list has probably already become outdated, you know, with as quickly as technology kind of becomes available. But here are some free uh, video editing software that we've found useful in the past that has been highly recommended to us. Um, if you know of any others, we'd love to update our list. Yeah, uh, somebody mentioned last night, uh, TikTok has video editing features too. And, and that they've really upped their game and what you can do. So Yeah, but in, <laughs> in order to, uh, we need to be able to have access to the file, either putting the video file right into the submission or sending us a link where we can download it. Right. right. Um, all right, and then, so any questions before we, uh, I, I hand it off to Renee to talk about the submission form. Yeah, Al, what can I help you with? So one of the questions that we had is um, like, to what extent can adults help with that? So for example, as the kids are uh, are doing things, I've been taking some photographs of, of their work and uh, some videos for them to be able to then edit and put together. Is totally that okay? Fine. Totally fine. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the adults can act as coaches and kind of support what they're doing, but kind of all the creativity and, you know, needs to come from the students. Um, Krista, yeah. Um, so uh, copyright music, got that. What about students um, in the video that maybe have slogans on their shirts like Gap or, you know, is that okay? I just curious. I think that's okay, unless it's no like problem. offensive, you know. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. yeah, I don't think that I don't think that's been pinged for us in the past. So You're or political okay. and some political stuff could be. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. 
Any other questions before we talk about the actual submission itself? Um, okay, so um, there's an online uh, Google form. So you have to have a Google email address to uh, submit the form. Um, but you know, you can just a student can just connect, uh, per, uh, establish a Google email address and then cancel it after they submit it. But um, basically, we're looking uh, for information about the teacher mentor or uh, the club advisor. Um, and then information about the school district, uh, the name of the school. We ask for the social school social media and local news outlets so that we can promote, uh, you know, and publicize um, the finalist when they're announced. And then uh, we ask for a name for the team of students and the number of team members. Um, we really want to keep the team, the number of team members. It's a minimum of two. And you know, kind of up to fifteen, like more than that, uh, it gets it gets a little unwieldy, and it really should focus the project team members should be the people, the students that actually worked on the project. Um, so, like last year, we had a submission, and they actually put like thirty people on the list, and they were a finalist, and we went back to them and said, like, okay, like there's thirty people on the list. Did all these people contribute? And they're like, no, they signed up, but they didn't weren't involved in the end and what, you know, so and it whittled down to a more reasonable number. So please, like on your list of team members, list the team members that actually contributed to the project. They don't necessarily have to be the ones on screen. They could have somebody that was like the film director and someone that was a researcher, but people that students that contributed to the project. Um, and then we need to know the grade level, uh, middle or high school, because there's two categories and there's finalists in each category. And then we need, again, the uh, team roster. And there's a, a template that you can link to. It's an Excel file that gives uh, the team members name, grade, uh, and student and parent email addresses. Um, and we want the parent email addresses because we also like notify them if they're a finalist. And if, and if your schools don't, like if your students have emails, but they can't accept emails from like the outside, just uh, let us know that. You can just email the um, NJ Student Climate Challenge email. So um, if we have to work through like the teacher contact to, to communicate with their students, we can do that. Um, and if there's more than one teacher involved in supporting the project, um, we can invite up to two teachers uh, for the finalists. So um, you can just name one and then just email us uh, at the email address and say, we submitted this under this teacher's name, but please note this other teacher was also a mentor for the team. Next. And then session two, uh, section two is the summary information. Um, basically a title and a brief uh, summary of what the project was. Um, the science explanation, as uh, Andrea mentioned, it's really important to link the project to a cause or impact of climate change. Like, and then um, project highlights, kind of more about like their experience doing the project, as we talked about the challenges they encountered, the lessons that your team took away from it, or what they learned, or uh, how they reached out to experts outside their organization, like. Um, Al mentioned that they're having um, somebody from the outside talk to the group. Any questions on that? And it says five or, or even working with buildings and grounds. That's yes. a collaboration mm -hmm. for sure, you know. Right. Um, and like a lesson learned with that, that's a great lesson for your students to learn that, uh, you know, you think you're going to do something and then put, somebody puts the brakes on it. That happens all the time in the real world for that's, everything. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's why we help to facilitate that meeting is to give them that experience. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It's great. Yeah. Um, um, for, for this piece, the written piece, is that something that uh, the adults, the advisors fill out or is that something that the kids are supposed to write? The kids because, are supposed to write it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, the kids are supposed to submit the form itself. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, you can be coaching them through, of course. Yeah, you can. Right, right. <laughs> 
Yeah. And the and 500 is, word is the limit. It doesn't, you don't have to be 500 words. If you can tell your, you know, tell your highlights in less than that, that's fine. Uh, next page, next slide. And then section three is the video details, uh, a title for the digital story, uh, the runtime of the video. Uh, the other thing that's really important is getting the climate challenge digital story student consent form and release forms. Um, if you can combine the forms in uh, uh, in one PDF, that would be great. You can download them, have them signed, and then maybe combine them into one PDF. If you need help doing that, email us at the uh, climate challenge email address, and we can help. We can do that if you want to send them individually, and then we'll combine them into one file and send it back to you so you can upload it. Um, the video file upload, uh, again, um, either you have to upload the file into the form or you can um, send us a link, but we need to be able to access it. Uh, last year, a couple people sent us links, but they weren't shared, so we couldn't download it. And we, you know, we obviously just reached back out to you. But if you if you can think about that ahead, it just it saves us time. And then I mentioned about having a Google account. Does anybody have any questions on this? I had a question before about the summary. I'm sorry, but my son was talking to me, so I didn't want to unmute. Um, did they need to say anything in the um, in the summary or is it okay just to accept it as climate science um, when they talk about different things? Yeah, I mean, I, I, use your good judgment as a teacher, I would say. If they are like, you know, 47.3 million gallons of this or be say, you know, like then maybe a citation is, is appropriate. You know, like they're being like super precise in their evidence that they're sharing or how it's gonna have an impact. But, um, you know, I, it's, I'm a little bit looser on this, you know, so use your good judgment as an educator, I would say. Renee, what do, what do you think? Yeah, when, our, can you go back to that page with the th thing? I just want to clarify Krista's question. Were you talking about in the projects highlight section or in the science explanation? Mainly the science explanation. Yeah, okay. So that that's what uh, Andrea said I, I agree with. Um, and in the projects highlights section, like if they found like a particular resource that helped them, like if they created a rain garden and they used a, you know, a rain garden guide from, you know, some the workers cooperative extension, it would be nice to like list the major resources that they use to support their project. But, but yeah, so I, I would say use your good judgment as an educator, you know, kind of like helping to guide them and help them think through like how precise, how technical language they're using, you know, yeah. if it's kind I of general. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say if it's if it's things that like, you know, I've taught middle school and high school for some time. So like if it's things that are like reasonably like they've probably learned this in a climate change lesson or, or you know, that they can kind of like talk about like in a, a coherent way then I wouldn't say they have to cite every single thing but you know if we're starting to to cite evidence I think it's good practice um but Renee I'm sorry what else were you gonna say I, I remember last year one of the submissions there was a debate like when we were reviewing it because they called did they call like co2 like a toxic chemical or something like that yeah I think there were some some language choices that that were like where did they pick up that you know like yeah I, or it's it's yeah. toxic, but it's highly necessary for other things. Yeah, know, like, right, right. So, so careful like ways. that, like people were a little hesitant about because it was a, kind of a mischaracterization. But um, but if it's other, the other is like common knowledge about climate change. That's like Andrea said, use your judgment. All right, next. Other questions? Is it good to where we are? Yeah, so that's a video. And then here's this scoring rubric. Yeah, so this is the rubric that um, me and Renee and the rest of the, uh, the um, video evaluator or the submission evaluators will actually use to review the student submissions. As Renee said, um, there are separate categories for the middle school award, um, first, second, third, and a high school, first, second, third. Um, we do try to have like 
you know, whoever is evaluating the middle school ones, evaluate all the middle school ones, just so we have good kind of like Raider reliability and all that good stuff. And uh, so this is the rubric. So um, we've tried to really kind of modify and, and clarify as best as we can over the past kind of couple iterations of the climate challenge the past few years. So um, one of the first elements that we look for is actually in the video itself. And that is the um, the storytelling, the creative elements of the storytelling itself. So the highest quality project is gonna be a video that is communicating to the viewer in a creative way. The highest quality project um, is going to be a video that is interesting and, and engaging and has a very clear purpose um, that we're not kind of like, wait, what's happening? Kind of like, um, you know, going on in the back of our head. Uh, the digital narrative or kind of the story throughout is going to be uh, clear and insightful and really connects with the overall uh, purpose of the project. So around that the climate action uh, project that was undertaken by the student. Um, there of course can be, you know, the, the kind of creative elements or engaging kind of like funny elements or, or um, storytelling approach that is absolutely fine like it doesn't have to be you know totally totally on the on the straight and narrow it can be fun it can be engaging um but we do still want it to be kind of have a clear purpose to it yeah can I just comment on that too because I remember one submission we had last year on anti-idling they did a really good video uh creative talking about anti-idling but they never really clearly stated what their project was and it turned out they like did a campaign for anti-idling and they reached out to students in the parking lot and things and they did PSAs but they never really clearly communicated that that's what they did the video was really good and it did really good explanation of um you know the what anti-idling is but they never really communicated what exactly their project was Right. And so a project like that would have scored very highly on that next this next row. So mm -hmm. um, a video that is able to score very high on this uh, kind of uh, uh, core, the core science ideas and this kind of cross cutting concept, of course, so we're, we're drawing language from the next generation science standards, which really kind of emphasizes um, the link between human activity and therefore the human impact on the environment and that cause and effect relationship between humans and um, climate change. And so really making sure that students are talking about the link between their action project and human activity and climate change in a, a kind of a coherent and, and um, kind of evidence-driven approach uh, is, is really important and would score very highly here. And so that's where, uh, like Renee is saying, a project that very clearly establishes how, you know, when we idle in cars, we're creating excess CO2 and how that has a direct link to climate change would score very high. But because we didn't know very much like from the video itself, like what the actual project or what the students did, it, it leaned more informational video as opposed to like action project digital story and so that's where you know there's pros and cons and so that's what we're looking for kind of a balanced video that can explain the project and what the students you know everything the students undertook to kind of create and, and accomplish their action project but at the same time demonstrate that this is you know our goal still is, is climate change education so we're hoping that students will learn something about climate change and the action that they can take and and talk um, you know, coherently and accurately about a, about the climate crisis. Um, and then the second, uh, and or I'm sorry, the, the second half or the third and fourth row are really going to turn is where we'll be evaluating the written components. And so the third row, we kind of hone in on just the written science explanation itself, because like I said, at the end of the day, we're hoping to increase uh, students' knowledge base around climate change and the action that we can take around climate change and how humans are directly linked. Um, so we're looking for the written science explanation to kind of very clearly be able to explain how the, uh, the action project um, was a solution that was innovative, but yet practical and, and implemented, you know, we say easily, but it's okay to have twists and turns you know, along the way that there was some perseverance or some grit needed to, to successfully complete the project. But, you know, so really um, being able to make that that uh, link to climate change here and, and the science explanation is accurate. And so that's where, you know, Chris, we were just talking about maybe there's a citation or a reference or here too, you know, to just talk about some of the evidence, not required, but certainly um, 
would not be, you know, a, a deterrent. Uh, you know, I don't want you to not do it. Um, and then the final row um, is kind of the other written components of the submission. And so, um, you know, the other, the project highlights, the summary, basically kind of throughout, we're looking to see that um, there are well-described, well-written, accurate information, there's clear communication, and that the science that is being addressed in the written component is clearly uh, connected to the video. You know, if you're doing an action project related to anti-idling and everything in the written component is just talking about, you know, kind of more vague, you know, about how methane is also a CO2, you know, and CO2 are both greenhouse gases. They're kind of like, kind of wandering down the path of not exactly connected, you know, so having a clear kind of um, storyline between the video itself and then follow that through to the written components is important. And, um, you know, like any good rubric, I know we're all educators, so we kind of, you know, kind of look at it how, um, how different projects may be scored differently depending on when when different aspects, you know, are a little weaker. Um, so four, three, two, one. And so this is a, a top score would be a 16 and then, you know, scores will range from there. But Yeah, and I think the kind of the connection, the video, has to make the connection um, to climate, like the cause or impact of climate, um, but you don't have to go into like detailed scientific explanations in the video. Um, the written component can support that, but there has to be, a, you know, in both the video and the written component, there has to be, it needs to be clearly articulated how this project right. is, uh, you know, addresses the cause or impact is a, is a solution in one way or the other. Questions on the rubric itself? Okay. And this is a, the rubric is available to you and feel free to share it with your students. I love to share a rubric on anything that I'm doing with my students. So, um, you know, feel free to share it. It's found in uh, both the teacher guide and the student guide. Um, and so, yeah, the kind of the, the big picture dates here. So the submissions are due April 21st. Um, we then have our team of evaluators. We'll be scurrying quickly to review as quickly as we possibly can to let the um, finalists in the middle school uh, category and the high school category, category know that they're um, finalists and will be invited to Drums Wackett Mansion again um, in the Princeton area. So the, the governor's mansion um, for an award ceremony on June 5th. We'll try to let schools know by early May so that all of the you know, arrangements can be made. And then um, the schools that are being invited will be our first, second, and third, but we won't, you won't know if you're first, second, or third until the night of the event. We like to kind of build a little suspense. And um, yeah, I mean, I forgot anything, anything else to add here, for Renee? Um, the event is early evening. I think it's like oh, right. five to seven. And uh, depending on how big the teams are of the finalist, um, we know that we can invite it's there's limited parking um at at the foundation and so we know that we can invite uh, invite each student one adult uh guest like over 18 and then uh the teacher and one other representative from the school district or the school um and most likely the notifications will go out like the towards the end of the second week in may it all depends on how many submissions that we get Um, and so uh, just on this, this kind of like, I think it's like the penultimate slide here that uh, these are again, will all be hyperlinks. They take you generally, I think all of them take you uh, directly to the PDF or the link uh, that is also found on the New Jersey Student Climate Challenge website, which is hosted by Sustainable Jersey for Schools. Um, so these are all hyperlinks for you. The teacher guide, the student guide, which is kind of like a um, more student focused language version of the teacher guide, but similar information, the official rules, the link to the Google form submission form, uh, the link to the actual template for the team roster and the blank uh, consent and release forms are all available to you here. We just kind of extra little quick, quick link. Um, and then, yeah, so. I, I was just going to mention in in the in the in the student guide and the teacher guide, you can kind of print out a PDF version of the submission form, so students know you know they can kind of type their type up their responses uh, in a in a Word document um, and then you know cut and paste it into the Google form. Yep. 
Uh, but yeah, and so that's where the, the bit.ly, but it's also um, the email address that Renee has referred to and I've referred to a couple times. So it's just NJ student climate challenge at sustainablejersey.com. And uh, yeah, we'll hop, we're happy to answer any questions or um, via email, but then also any here tonight, uh, happy to happy to help address. You want to stop sharing? Yep. Great. Any other questions? I don't think so. I think you answered the two burning questions that I had. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. Same. I don't think I have any more questions. Okay, great. Um, but feel free to re you know, reach us through the email address or you can email me directly. I think you both have my email addresses or um and Jody uh you're gonna put it in the chat if you have anything, but yeah. Yeah, you want to put it in, I'll put it in the chat. But thank you all for joining us on a Wednesday evening. And I'm very excited. I'm sure Renee is too, to uh, see these submissions when they come in and let's see, just about a month. Yeah, we are very excited. And Al, if if you want to include fil uh, footage from your April 21st, of uh, your April 20th event, like if you submit the form um, by the 21st and then just, you know, send us the video like early the following week, that's fine. Just email us and let us know that you're doing it because it's going to take us a, a day or two to kind of check everybody in and get things organized to start the review. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you all. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. I'm going to stop recording. Okay.